everybody. Hey, let's give a big old welcome to all our live locations. Everybody watching online, computer, smartphone, TV, however you're there, man. Welcome. I'm Pastor Tim. And so happy you're here for our new summer series called Mastermind, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, which is all about the battlefield of your mind and how God's truth can really set you free from negative thinking, chronic worries, uh, maybe you have some toxic spiraling, and really replace the lies of the enemy with the liberating truth of God. Uh, I'm really excited for this series. I believe it may be very well life-changing uh, for many of you. Now, before we dive in, I just want to remind you, next Sunday, it's the start of our new summer service times. On Sunday, July 18th, that's next week, our new service times are changing to 9 and 11 a.m. at our broadcast campus in Parsippany and then 9.30 and 11.30 at the rest of our campuses. So set your clock next Sunday, July 18th, new summer service times at all live liquid location. All right, who's ready to hear from God today? Make some noise if you're hungry for the Word of God. Let me open to a very powerful chapter in the book of Romans. It is chapter 12, verse 2, and this is our memory verse for part one of Mastermind. Each week, I'm going to challenge you to memorize a scripture verse this summer. What we're doing is we're going to hide God's word in our heart. I actually have a surprise for you at the end, but let's read this together, church. Big, loud voice all at once. Here's the Apostle Paul. He gives this command in Romans 12. He says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be, what's the word, church? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everybody point to your head and say, I'm ready to renew my mind. I'm going to get my mind right. <laughs> For the next four weeks, we're going to talk about how to renew your mind in a culture that's trying to cripple it. It is no secret that many of us are weighed down right now by uh, some chronic fears or worries, negative thoughts that can maybe cause you, they just run away with you at night and they spiral and, and there's this anxious or toxic thinking. We even believe the lies of our enemy Lucifer. You're not good enough. You'll never change. You'll never measure up. Flat out falsehoods that the devil designed to hold you hostage and keep you from the freedom and power that's your birthright as a son or daughter of God. So for four weeks, we're going to transform our minds with truth. Not just any truth, God's truth. Instead of conforming to like just the way the world works, we're going to actually saturate our brains with Scripture. And today, I want to study the words of the original mastermind in the New Testament, that is the Apostle Paul who wrote this letter to Romans in chapter 12. In fact, let's read it again and watch Paul kind of expand the idea. He says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, the way the world thinks, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now watch this. What's the result of renewing your mind? Watch this. Then you will be able to what? Test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Anybody want to know God's will for their life? <laughs> You want to live in the center of God's purpose for your days. Paul says, you've got to get your mind right. You've got to get your mind aligned with the mind of God. It is not God's will for you to live in constant fear or worried about what other people think. It is not God's will for you to wake up just overwhelmed by everything I've got to do today or pinned down by nagging fears about your kids, always worried what's going to happen, or even a critical attitude towards others. It's just not God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for anybody's life. And Paul says, you've got to break the pattern of the way the world thinks and renew your mind. And what we've discovered is that most of life's battles are won or lost in your mind. Your mind is a battlefield. And as a Christian, you have a choice. You can believe Satan's lies to you, or you can believe God's truth about you. The good news is that God's truth is powerful, not just to change your mind, but actually master it, transform it with his truth. So in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to crack the head of Apostle Paul open because Paul was a mastermind. You guys remember um, Ultimate Warrior from like WWF, that wrestler? Paul is, is like the ultimate thought warrior. He knew how to win this battle. What's interesting to me is if you look at Paul's early life, you'll notice Paul had a very negative past, right? Some of you are like, I've done some shameful things. I don't think God would like me very much. Have you ever hunted down Christians? <laughs> Have you ever killed any of them? He was an enemy of God in his mind. But then Paul met Jesus, becomes his followers, and we watch through the New Testament as Christ renews Paul's mind over time. At first, he struggles, right? Fear, the things I, I want to do, I don't do. The things I, I, I don't want to do, I end up doing that. He's like, I want to live in God's truth, but the devil's waging war 
against the law of my mind. He almost sounds crazy as his thoughts and behavior wrestle back and forth. But eventually, Paul makes progress and says, I'm going to wage war against the enemy's lies with the truth of God. And so today, Paul's going to show us how do we take captive negative thoughts and actually replace them with God's truth to win the war in your mind. And I pray this has been life-changing for some of you. It's been life-changing for me. Right now, I am reading a book called Winning the War in Your Mind, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life by my friend, Pastor Craig Rochelle. That's what this, this whole series is based on. Uh, Colleen and I were able to spend some time with Pastor Craig and Amy when they visited Liquid, and, uh, and he wrote a very kind endorsement for my book, but I just want to acknowledge his is far better. <laughs> and I want to give Pastor Craig full credit for this important message because it's really challenged me to take a hard look at my thought life and just kind of shine a spotlight on some dark areas, some mental strongholds that are holding me back. So if you're looking for a redemptive summer reading, I want to recommend this book to you because it's really eye-opening. What I love about it is it combines science with scripture, specifically neuroscience, the study of the brain. And we don't have to be afraid of science because God created science, amen? And both scripture and science confirm the same reality, and here it is. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Leave that up there. I want you to think on that. In other words, what you tend to think about comes out in your life, and science and scripture confirm that. In fact, There is an entire discipline of modern psychology that's called cognitive behavioral psychology. And it actually shows that a lot of problems today that people struggle with are actually rooted in negative patterns of thinking. Not all addictions, but some addictions are part of wrong thinking. Some eating disorders are are based on toxic thoughts. Some relational challenges, not all. Some anxiety is a direct result of broken thinking. And that's what modern science confirms. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. And scripture actually says the same thing. In fact, the wisest guy in the Bible, Solomon, in Proverbs 23, described it this way. He said, for as a person thinks in his heart, so is he. In other words, what do we know? The life you have is often a reflection of the thoughts you think. The life you have is a a reflection of the thoughts you think. What you think determines who you become. In other words, if you think you can't do something, guess what? You probably won't, right? If you think you can, by God's grace, you probably will try, or at least you will try. If you fixate only on your problems, you get up and you say, man, the world is bad. It's going to hell in a handbasket. Life is hopeless. Guess what? You will get overwhelmed by eight o'clock in the morning. But instead, if you actually renew yourself in the Holy Spirit, renew, saturate your brain in Scripture, If you believe with faith, no, 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 whatever comes today, it can be hard, but I can tap into God's strength. God has good stored up for me, good works he's planned in advance. You will actually discover some solutions, and you're going to watch your faith grow. See, if you always feel like you're a victim of your circumstances, guess what? You will probably live like a victim for most of your life. But if you actually take the truth of God and say, no, 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 I'm not a victim. I'm actually more than a conqueror by the love and power of Christ that work within me. You can overcome anything. The truth is, the life you lead is a reflection of the thoughts you think. Thoughts shape action. Action shapes behavior. Behavior shapes your destiny. So I want to take a minute and and pause right here and make it personal. I want to stop before we look at Paul's steps to mind renewal. I want to challenge you for a minute to think about what you think about. All right? I'm going to do a little exercise. I did this week. It's called a thought audit. This is very, very helpful. I want you to take a minute to think about what you think about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three scales, scale of 1 to 10. And I want you to try to to identify what's your just default thinking most days, okay? The first scale is contrasting a worried mind versus a peaceful mind. Where would you fall on this scale 1 through 10? Like when you wake up in the morning, are your thoughts more characterized by by worry or, or, or panic or overwhelm or fear? or more by peace and calm. When, when you wake up tomorrow morning, Monday, does your mind start, start kind of racing like about, you know, what's going to go wrong today? I'm worried about my kids. I, I'm worried about my health. You see that mole in my neck. Uh, I, I'm anxious about the economy. I, I'm worried about the, the state of our nation. Our, our country's out of control. Is your default thinking more worried thoughts or peaceful ones? 
In other words, even if it's a tough season, do you actually find yourself, no, no, I, I got it. I can cast my cares upon God today. I can sense the Holy Spirit, which transcends human understanding. Even if life is hard and complex right now, I still sense God's goodness. I sense his presence, his spirit with me. Where would you rank yourself one to 10 on this thought audit? Do your thoughts trend more worried or more peacefully? Get, get a number for yourself? All right, let me show you a second category. Do your thoughts drift towards the negative or the positive? Do you wake up and find yourself just kind of like negative, critical of people? I'm going to be working with her today, and who does she think she is? Uh, kind of assuming the worst instead of believing the best? Do you look at your day and you say, man, it's, it, it's, it's 7 a.m. and I'm already behind. There's not enough me to go around, okay? My family isn't going to help. And my spouse, and I, and, and, and I can't wait for this day to be over. And you're like, it's 7.15, or do you wake up with positive faith? Again, even if the day is, is loaded, you'd say, no, no, I know Christ is with me. Even when I feel weak, he's strong, and he's going to carry me and help me overcome today. Even the hard stuff, I know God's working all things together for my good because I love him, and God loves me. Just where would you put yourself? On an average day, what would you characterize your thoughts, positive or negative? Got a number? Last category, thought audit. Think about what you think about. On a typical day, are your thoughts more worldly or eternal. In other words, your thoughts drift more towards the pattern of this world, like where you're really concerned about like with what I have, what are we wearing, what am I going to eat, what, what do I look like today, where are we going, are we going to travel, are we going to buy something, who liked my post, how many followers do I have, worldly, where everybody's thinking about you, or is your mind focused more on eternal things, where you actually enter the day with a sense of like, man, God's given me this this amazing life to steward, and he's blessed me with some, some incredible spiritual gifts to use. And so I don't want to waste a moment today. I want, to, I want to invest myself in things that matter, and I want to make a difference in the lives of people, especially the, those who are lost or, or lost in the world. So, so when everything else falls away from my life on earth, it's going to count for eternity. What would you say characterizes your typical thoughts? One through ten, thought audit. I want you to listen to me. What you think about on a daily basis matters more than you can imagine because what comes into your mind comes out in your life. And you cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. Why? Because your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So here's my question to you. If your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts right now, here's my question. Are you excited about that? Are you excited about the direction that your thoughts are taking you? Now, I asked myself that when I was reading this book and really looking back on the pandemic, and my answer was honestly, no, no. As I looked, as I did an audit of some of the thoughts directing my life over the last 18 months, I didn't like the direction they were taking me in because I noticed probably more than any other time in the last 20 years, they were consumed with negativity and fear. Specifically, if I can be very personal, in my family, there's, we've never said it, but there's a bit of a fear of illness, of, of sickness. My, my father died from a 15-year battle with lymphoma. Never was, didn't have a sick day in 40 years of work, and then he gets stricken with this dread cancer. And over this past year, surrounded by COVID and all this, I've just had this irrational, nagging fear, you're going to get sick like your father. You're going to die of cancer or heart attack or some dread disease. And I'm not a negative person. It, it's pretty irrational, but, but sometimes at night, like before I go to sleep, my mind doesn't drift off. My mind actually starts racing. And I find my thoughts can kind of run away from me and start spiraling down. And, and I actually think like I'm dying or having a, a panic attack. I've never had that before in my life. But I think the pandemic just, just, kind, of, just kind of amplified my fears because 18 months of, you know, headline news day after day where it's all just sickness, death, and dying, it just made my fears rise up when I least expected it. And what I realized now is the enemy was using these anxious thoughts to kind of harass me, to keep me distracted and, and preoccupied and worried and fearful about the future. Even though I trust God completely, I'm a person of faith and I'm a confident man by nature. And so over the spring, I began to actually battle back and say, God, would you renew, renew my mind with your truth? Because God's truth is powerful, amen? You can actually win this war. 
But you have to learn to fight back. And I want to show you two ways the Apostle Paul overcame the fears and lies in his life and help you replace them with God's truth. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10. He says you can fight because here's the deal. As a Christian, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine, what's the word, church? Divine power. Everyone say divine power. The Greek word is dunamis. It means dynamite. It's the miraculous explosive power of God to demolish, what's the word? Strongholds. Now, what is a stronghold? The word stronghold comes from the Greek word akuroma, and it means a military fortress, I'll show you a picture, surrounded by strong walls where you lock up a prisoner. The walls could be 20 feet deep. This is actually the stronghold of Dolbardarn Castle in northern Wales. It's where they kept princes and and royals safe in a stronghold during battle. But it was also used to keep enemy prisoners because the walls were so thick they'd never get out. You just lock them away in the stronghold. It's impenetrable. And what Paul is doing here in 2 Corinthians is he's comparing the lies that you and I believe to this fortress. He's like, you want to see a stronghold? He's like, this is how the devil The spiritual enemy of your soul wants to attack your mind, and he's going to create strongholds of deception. He will send you lie after lie to warp your thinking one at a time until the walls of that stronghold get bigger and bigger in your life until you are locked up, completely unfree to live for Christ. There's a mental stronghold in your life. Now, you may be like, what do you you mean, Tim? It's not just self-doubt. No, no, no. There are lies that the devil actually peddles to you all the time. Do you ever find yourself thinking, you know, I, I, I just can't change, you know? E- even if I try, I'll always be overweight. My family's always struggle with that. Or, or we'll always be in debt, you know? My family, we're just not good with money. Or marriage, like I'm just, you know, it's just, <sighs> she's, she's never going to change. I'm no good at relationships. You know, whenever I start to grow close, I do something to screw it up. In fact, I'm a screw up, you know? I can't believe God would care about somebody like me. I mean, he would certainly hear Pastor Tim's prayer. He's not going to hear my prayer. Listen to me. That's the voice of your enemy. He's waging war on the battlefield of your mind to keep you captive. You know what Jesus called Satan? A liar and a punk. Listen to this. He said, there is no truth in him. When he lies, this is the devil, he speaks his native language for he is what? A liar and the father of lies. In other words, he gives birth to lies all the time. So understand, Satan is an enemy and he's always looking for a place in your mind where you may agree with a falsehood that is not true. For, and he'll get you either, the, he is so, uh, the devil. If you succeed at something, maybe he'll whisper, hey, great job, Mike. You got this, bro. You didn't even need God. You didn't even have to pray about that, man. You got this. Or if you fail at something, he'll try to brainwash you. Like, Clint, you'll always be a failure, bro. Sorry. You'll just never, you, you know, you have modest talent. You, you'll never amount to anything. If you're trying to stay away from porn, he'll tell you why. Everybody else is looking at it. Like, <laughs> don't be a prude. What's the big deal? Yeah? But if you give in to porn, he'll say, you are a sicko. You are the only person who's, who's perverted enough to do such a disgusting thing. God, God doesn't even want to look at you. He's repulsed by you. You see? The devil will get you on either side. His whole strategy is to get you to buy into something that is untrue about God or yourself to lead you away from God's freedom and healing and purpose for your life. So he will tell you lies like, you can never trust people. Don't trust them. They'll get you, they'll stab you in the back. You'll never succeed. God could never forgive you. Voices, accusations, and flat out lies that if you swallow him, watch this, they will create a stronghold in your life. So let me ask you this question. What lies have a stronghold on you right now in this season? Do you know? Let me challenge you to take this step right now. Identify the biggest stronghold that's holding you back right now. Remember, stronghold prisoner locked in by a lie. What's the biggest mental stronghold that's holding you back that you think over and over again, you know? And it could be, you know, just like, I'm just, I'm not good enough. Or, man, my past, I've done some majorly screwed up things, man. God would, could never use somebody like me. Or I'm always going to battle with, you know, whatever it is, depression. I'll never feel joy again. I'll never be close to God. I, I'm never going to get a job that is fulfilling in something that I actually love. What's the lie? What's the stronghold? I'm always going to date psychos. It's just how it goes, man. All my relationships are doomed to blow up or break down. What is one negative thought that has a stronghold in your mind? 
I want you to understand something. Whenever you entertain those negative thoughts, they are actually changing the chemical makeup in your brain. Did you know that? Every thought that you have creates a neurochemical change in your body. For instance, when you have positive thoughts, do you know what happens? You actually get a, a surge of neurotransmitters that release a very rewarding and legal drug. It's called dopamine. You guys know dopamine? Totally legal. Every time your, your brain drops some dopamine, you get this hit, this, this buzz, this, this, this thrill. So someone says, hey, bro, Clint, you've been working out, man. You look like you're losing weight. Dopamine, Clint's like, I think I have been. Some, someone likes your, you respect, likes your latest Instagram post, Kyra. Boop, dopamine, thank you very much. Colleen texts me and says, I'm just thinking about you, baby. Come home soon. Dopamine, it's this positive surge, this release in your brain. And what's interesting is the more often you think a thought, science says it's easier for you then to think that thought again. Because watch this, you're creating neural pathways in your brain. This is amazing, this science. Again, you have literally billions and billions of neural pathways in your brain going off all the time. And the more often you think a, a thought, the more connection there is, which makes it easier then to think that thought Again, because you see it has a pathway now in your mind. And before long, whatever thoughts you've been repeating, that's your default thinking. And if it's negative, it creates, guess what? A stronghold. Because if you believe a lie for long enough and your mind starts to act, well, this, this lie is true, you get stuck in a rut. I want you to imagine this. You, you guys see how this works? If, if you walked out in your front yard and you walked across your lawn in a certain pattern for 100 days straight, same line, same path to your car, thousands of steps. What do you think is going to happen to your lawn, right? You're going to create a pathway in your yard. Same thing. If you think on a lie for 100 days straight, you will start to believe the lie and it will create this neural pathway for your brain just to run off with it. You can call it stinking thinking. <laughs> it's where lies get lodged in your mind and they create this stronghold you can't change. But with God's help, we're going to renew our minds like Paul says. We're going to actually stay off that old path. And you know what actually happens, by the way? If you stay off your lawn for 100 days, what happens? The grass grows back. And now there's more resistance. It's not as easy to trample over. I've got to put a new pathway in my brain towards God's truth. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Set you, everyone, free. Again, look at our memory verse. Paul says, do not conform to the what? pattern of this world. You could translate that. Don't be conformed to the pathways of the world. These wrong patterns of thinking. But be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. Paul's like, stay off that destructive, negative pathways of lies and replace it for God's truth. Now, how does that look for you? Maybe you have some well-worn pathways in your life. I do. <laughs> Maybe you're at home and... Um, you're raising some kids, and, and they're kind of rude. Shocker, I know. Maybe you have a sassy middle schooler or, or a teen who talks back to you, and their native tongue is sarcasm and eye rolls. Ugh. You're like Michael Scott from The Office, you idiot, you know? And, and, when, and when they take that tone with you, you take it personally. And it triggers a thought like this. She can't talk to me like that. I will not be disrespected in my own home. I am not raising Rue's kids. And you get angry. And so you fire back, you start yelling, and it's this well-worn pathway in your home, but it's a toxic pattern. What you do is you actually say, I'm going to stay off that path. I'm going to capture this thought, take it captive. And you may have to count to five or 500 in your case. And you say a prayer, and instead you say, Lord, help me change my tone because I'm going to step over that because, honey, I still love you even when you're rude to me. And you hug them and you change the tone in the house by changing the path that you travel. What do you do when you're bored? What do you do when you're bored? I know what you do, because I do it too. You pull out your phone and what do you do? You start scrolling, right? You go through Instagram and you say, oh, look, here's all my friends. Ha, I hate them all, <laughs> right? You do. Why? Because their life, right, is the highlight reel and it seems way better than yours. You're like, my, my life sucks. Like, and then you're like, look, they had this party. Why wasn't I invited? And now you feel like a loser. So instead of scrolling, what if you created a new path? 
What if you put something different in your brain when you're bored that actually renews your mind? So you think in a different way, you're going to have to forge a different path in your brain because the more you walk that path, the easier it becomes to travel. The more you stay off the old one, the more it weakens, and it's harder to think those same thoughts again. So here's your homework this week. You've got homework, class. Identify the single biggest stronghold in your life that's holding you back. Just one. We're not going to tackle 97 lies at once, all right? Start with one. What is it for you? Maybe you struggle with your identity, and you're like, I'm just not lovable. <laughs> you know, if people knew the real me, they'd, I think they'd run away, Tim. Maybe that's your one. Or you might wrongly believe that, you know what? i got to prove myself every day. Like, I get it, God loves me, but i got to prove myself. And so you work harder, you work longer, you outperform, you overwork everybody, and it's running you ragged. Maybe that's your one lie. Or maybe it's, I don't deserve anything good. You know, I'm always just going to be broke. There's haves and have-nots, and we're have-nots. <laughs> maybe, maybe you feel helpless. Life is hopeless. You know, what's the point in trying? Could you identify one stronghold? Name it, because here's why I'm challenging you. You can never defeat what you can't define. You have to give it a name. You have to call out the lie. What is holding you hostage? What falsehood is keeping you from taking a step of faith? What toxic thought pattern is robbing you of the freedom and joy Christ died to give you? Now, here's the second part of your assignment is to memorize the truth that demolishes the stronghold. Everybody say memorize. memorize. Say truth. truth. Demolish. Demolish. Why does truth matter? Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you what? Free. So you have to remove that lie and actually replace it with God's truth. You have to, it's his truth that demolishes that stronghold. Again, look at Paul's instruction. He says, the weapons we fight with have divine power, they demolish, conquer, vanquish, obliterate strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of who? Of God. And now watch this. This is so important. Let's take it together. Big voice. Ready? We take captive every thought to make it obedient to who? Christ. Here's a question for you right now. Do you take your thoughts captive or are you captive to your thoughts? Because it's your thoughts that create strongholds, even when they're not based in reality. <laughs> Let me show you one of my favorite photos. Put it up on the screen. It's a photo of a big, powerful stallion. Take a look at him. And he's chained to a cheap plastic lawn chair. You ever see this picture? <laughs> now, the horse is just staying completely still. He's got his head down. He's like all demoralized and defeated. Why? Because he's been a stupid animal. He's been mentally conditioned... <laughs> Oh, that when the master ties my reins to an object, I can't move. I can't fight back. This chair is going to spin me down. And it's kind of hilarious because the horse is this huge, powerful beast. And he's like, I'm tied to the chair again. Sucks to be me. He, he, he just surrenders. He doesn't even think he has power in him to act because he's like, I'm not free. And we laugh at that because we're like, it's a stupid plastic lawn chair. And that stallion could snap it in two if it used just an ounce of the power it has. What's my point? Sometimes the thing that's holding you back is all in your head. Some of you right now, you don't have what God wants you to have. You're not living the life of freedom that Christ died to give you because you're chained to a chair. And the devil's laughing at you, stupid Ken, stupid Karen. It's a stronghold that has you held back or pinned down. It's holding you prisoner in your mind, so what do you do? We go to the mastermind. Paul says, we demolish those arguments, every pretension that sells itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it bow to Christ. Whatever the lie is, we take it captive. Now, the word for take captive here, this is fascinating, it actually means the Greek, to seize somebody with a sword. Yeah? It's like an intruder is coming in your house, and you like pull out a sword to confront him. You stop right there. You arrest him. I take it captive at point of death. I'm preaching to somebody right now. God is declaring in Christ, you are not a prisoner to your thoughts. You have the power to take your thought captive and make him obedient to Christ. Lies do not determine your destiny. The truth of God does. It's who he says you are. What's the weapon you use? Well, as a Christian, you have the what? The sword of the what? 
Spirit, which is the word of God. This is your weapon to fight back. It says we demolish strongholds. We destroy them. We crush them. We obliterate them with the truth of God that will set you free. Because the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. And it will expose, remove, and replace the lies of the enemy. This is the renewal process Paul's describing here. How do we renew our mind? First, we remove the lie. We take out Satan's lie. We expose it. We're saying out with the old and in with, we replace it with the truth of God. The truth of God's word. We let God's word take captive any lies that held us hostage. What is the dominant lie right now that your enemy has tried to use to cripple your faith for so long? To strangle your relationships. To keep you close to God, but not that close. We don't want him getting any closer. What's the stronghold holding you back? Mine? The one I've been attacking with God's word over the, the spring and now into the summer is this irrational fear. You know? That, that I'm, I'm just, I think I'm just going to get sick and, and some dread disease and, and die early. There's a fear in my family. There's always medical stuff. And so when that fear rises up, I go, hold it, hold it right there. Whoa, no, right there. I take captive that thought and I hold it up to the truth of God. And I attack it with Psalm 139. This is the verse that I've memorized. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I, I actually pray. I stand on the truth. Lord, nope, you have numbered my days. Jesus, you have numbered every hair on my head, and I got a lot of them. <laughs> so, Lord, my life is in your hand. I trust my Father. He's actually already written the life story of Tim Lucas in his book, Every Day Ordained for Me, before one of them even came to be. He knows my beginning. He knows my end, and I can trust him completely. I remind myself, nothing can happen to me apart from the, the good and perfect will of my Father. And so guess what happens? I wrestle, I battle, I take it captive, and then I have peace of mind because I've rebuked that fear with the truth of God. Amen? That's how you fight back if you want to be a powerful Christian. You remove the lie of the enemy and you replace it with the truth of God. So what's the stronghold that's holding you back? And what's God's truth that will set you free? Maybe you're here and you think, you know, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not enough. My family wasn't enough. I, I'm not a good enough parent or I, 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 I can never get it all done. And you're going to take the truth of God that says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me what? Strength. Even when I'm weak, that's when Christ is at his strongest. Maybe you feel like I'll, I'll never be attractive enough. I don't like the way I look in the mirror. No, 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 no. You are beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made by the grace of God. He's given you beautiful gifts to make a difference in this world. Maybe you're like, I, I, Tim, I'm just always going to be miserable. I'm always going to feel depressed. No, no, no. The joy of the Lord can be your strength. The moment the liar whispers to you, you're going to be alone. I'm never alone. Christ has promised, Jesus will never leave me, never forsake me. The devil whispers, no, 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 you're nothing but a victim. No, 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 no. God's word says, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me and gave himself up for me. Amen? You have to declare war. I am not who others say I am. I'm not even who my own lion mind says I am. I am who God says I am. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You cannot have a positive life when you have a negative, fear-filled mind. What comes into your mind comes out in your life. And so Paul says, take it captive. Every thought, capture that lie. Name it. I forbid you entry. Remove it and replace it with the truth of God. And by the power of God, you will break that stronghold. Because Jesus holds the key that sets every prisoner free. Amen? God can set you free. Make some noise if you're ready to demolish some strongholds and let's make the devil pay. So to close, I've got a little surprise to help you today. Because you came to church, I'm actually going to give you a special gift to help you become a mastermind this week. Uh, some of you have been actually staring at my right hand the whole time. And you're like, what is that? Is that a smudge mark? Did Tim go to a club? Is that, uh, did Pastor Tim get a tattoo? Why, yes. Yes, I did. And I want you to get a tattoo too. This is a special scripture tattoo. It's actually temporary. But we designed this to help you memorize scripture. Those of you who grew up in church, any of you memorize memory verses as, as a little kid? Remember that? My grandma would give me a dollar for every memory verse, and I hated it then. Thankful for it now. 
Because actually how she taught me to hide God's truth in my heart. I'd memorize these, these key verses so I could pull out God's truth whenever I needed it. Uh, can I be honest with you? I think memorizing scripture is like a lost art in the modern world. We are just binge watching, distracted. We're so busy. But I'm convinced if you're going to memorize God's truth, it is a vital spiritual discipline. So I want to challenge you to memorize scripture with me this summer. Let me show you how the scripture tattoo works. This is what it looks like close up. Take a look at it. You can see it's a picture of what? A brain. And our creative team put the first letter of each word in your memory verse. So this, this week you've got this picture of this brain and you know our memory verse. Look at the first letter, right? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the what? Do you remember? Renewing of your mind. Now those are your advanced placement. Get ready. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. R12.2 stands for Romans 12.2. Do you see how that works? It's a scripture tattoo. Every week of the series, if you're at one of our live locations, we are going to give you a scripture tattoo on your way out today. And I want you to take this home, you apply it to the back of your hand, a little wetness, you know, and, and, and you put this on. I want you to memorize this truth from God's word in your heart. Every morning when you get in the mirror and say, man, what do I got going on today? <gasps> right. Don't be conformed to the world. I'm going to be transformed. I'm going to renew my mind today. You're going to get in your car. People are going to cut you off. You're going to be late to work. And you're going to see your hands on the wheel and you're going to say it out loud. Oh, Lord, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Why? You're changing your mind. You're creating new pathways by training your brain with Scripture. You remove the lie. You take captive every thought. And you demolish strongholds and replace it with the truth of God. Amen? Parents, this is very powerful to do with your kids. I want to encourage you to memorize Scripture together as a family. Kids, this is a moment you say, Pastor Tim said it's okay to get a tattoo. Okay? <laughs> Tell your parents today. But mom and dad, you better do it with them. Because guess what? You are modeling how to fight Satan's lies to your kids with God's truth about them. And here's my promise. If anybody here, kids, anybody, whoever memorizes each memory verse in a series, we're going to give you another one next week. I'm going to give out good humor at the end of this series, okay? Good humor ice cream. Praise God for that. At every campus, we're going to give out ice cream to all the masterminds who memorize our verse every week. Guys, you can win the war in your mind. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you, everyone together. Again, free. The truth is not a concept. The truth is this person, and his name is Jesus, and he's handing you a key that can set you free. Amen? Let's pray together. Father, today I ask by the power of your word, would you renew our minds with truth this summer? As we hide your word in our hearts like David, would you shatter strongholds and set your people free? Change our lives as we break free from the pattern of this world. Transform us with the renewing of our minds. As we're praying, our heads are bowed at each campus, and you'd say, man, I, Tim, that's me. This spoke to me. I need God's help. I've been struggling with my thoughts. Nobody knows. There's a war in my mind, and I want to break the stronghold. I need God's truth to set me free. Would you just lift up your hand? Just lift up your hand right up wherever you are. If you're watching online, say, I, I need God's truth. Just type in the chat. I need God's truth. Father, I pray right now that you'd begin a work of mind renewal. By your Spirit, begin tearing up old patterns and ways of stinking thinking, and Holy Spirit, begin uprooting and removing the lies that bind and replace it with your truth that sets us free. Father, we realize it may take you time to do this, to renew our minds. So give us patience and faith to walk with you, to stay off these old paths of destruction and believe the truth of who you say we are. As we're praying today, maybe you believe the lie that God could never love somebody like you. Maybe you, maybe you have a warped view of God. And you're like, I can't get close because Timmy's angry. Or you think he's disappointed in you or he's here just to judge you. Can I just tell you that is a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from Satan. The truth is God the Father loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to this earth to show his love. Jesus lived the perfect life that you can never live. And on the cross, Jesus died the death that we all deserved. But he was raised from the dead by the power and love of God. And the gospel, the good news is this. Anybody who calls on the name of Jesus Christ, no matter how weak, no matter how shameful, no matter how jacked up your life is or full of doubt or unlovable you feel, anybody who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. God will adopt you. He'll make you his son or daughter. That's the truth. God will forgive your sin, restore your heart, renew your mind, and set you free. Guys, God isn't mad about you or mad at you. He's mad about you. 
And so no matter what you've done, understand God wants you to know his love right now. So if you feel distant from God, you can create a new path right now directly to his heart. If you'll ask him, we're just praying right now, he will open heaven and pour his grace into your life. And you can become a new creation. So right now at every campus or if you're online, if you're like, man, I need God's love, Tim. I want to experience his forgiveness. I want to trust him completely. If that's your heart cry, just pray with me right now today. In fact, let's all pray these words. Big, loud voice. Here we go. Jesus, today I receive your love and your truth into my life. Thank you for creating me. Invade my life. Forgive every sin, every thought I've had. Come into my heart. Set me free. I turn from my sin, from my broken thinking. Saturate me with your Holy Spirit. Renew my mind as I surrender my heart. In Christ, I am a new creation. I am who you say I am. In Jesus' name, everybody said together, amen. Liquid Church, would you welcome new believers into the family of God? Praise God for you. You are who he says you are. Thanks for watching Liquid Church YouTube channel. Hey, don't stop here. I want to invite you to be part of our online community. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this with a friend. You know, everybody's welcome to join us. If you were blessed by this message, you can support our ministry by clicking the Give Now button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Christ. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.